Wir werden heute das Berg geschehen. Und äh, wie viele erwarten wir noch? Da kommen schon einige. Uh, ja, einige kommen schon, aber vielleicht diese Freunde, die hier gerade sind, sie können einfach, äh, also Namen und Ort, woher sie sind, einfach sagen. Und dann kennen wir auch vielleicht einander ein bisschen so. Ja, dann kennen wir uns besser, äh, kennen. Und dann, sie wissen, dann wissen sie auch Bescheid, woher sie eigentlich kommen. Jemand ist vielleicht in Lucknow, jemand ist in Kerala, das ist wirklich sehr schön zu hören. Also Anil, Anil oder Amitabh, Sie können schon beginnen, bitte. Ich heiße Devkaran und ich bin hier in Jaipur. Bitte schon. Guten Tag, guten Tag. Ich heiße Amitabh Joshi und ich bin hier in Uttar Pradesh. Sehr schön. Ja, Anil, Maitri, Anjali, Ankush, ja, bitte. Ja, guten Tag, ich heiße Anjali, ich wohne in Bhopal. Bhopal? Nein. Bitte. Guten, guten Tag, ich bin Ankush, ich wohne in Delhi. Aha. Guten Tag, ich bin Vivek, ich wohne in Kerala. In? Guten Tag, ich heiße Okay. Ich wohne in Vegas. Priyagraj. Aha. Hallo. Ich heiße so, ich wohne in Gandhinaga, aber ich bin jetzt meine Heimatstadt in Jabulpur, in Bihar. Aha, wunderbar. Und Anil? Ja. Ja, hallo zusammen. Guten Tag. Ich heiße Anni und ich komme aus Bangalore, Karnataka. Und so seit ich wohne ich in Dortmund, Deutschland. Oh, danke. Ja, schon. Barka? Guten Tag, ich heiße Barka. Ich komme aus Lachen. Mhm. Yuvraj, Shubham? Guten Tag, Herr. Ich komme aus Nagar, ich wohne in Jaipur. Ich komme aus Nagar, aber ich wohne in Jaipur. In Jaipur, okay, wunderbar. Rina Shubham. Guten Tag, ich bin Shubham, ich lebe in Pune, Maharashtra. Alles klar. Guten Tag, mein Name. Mhm. Guten Tag, mein Name ist Rina, ich wohne in Bangalore. Bangalore, okay. Und Barkha? Uh, ja, sir, guten Tag. Guten Tag, guten Tag. Ja, ja, gut. Wunderbar, können wir hören. Bitte. Ja, sir. Ich heiße Barkha, ich komme aus Lachnow. Okay. Und? Hallo, gut. Ja, Manish. Hallo, guten Tag, ich heiße Manish, ich wohne in Japan. Mhm, wunderbar. Und Shubham hat schon, oder? Shubham? Ja, ich Aha. Alles klar. Ja, ich, ich denke, alle haben sich ein bisschen vorgestellt. Okay, gut. Ja, yes, Sir, wie die Freunde ja, schon. Herr Professor, vielleicht die Freunde ich kennen schon. Also wie die anderen das gemacht haben, stelle ich mich auch ganz kurz vor. Ich heiße Murphy und komme aus Heidelberg. Und ich wohne auch in Heidelberg. Und seit mehr als 40 Jahren ja, sind Sie tätig als Lehrer und nette Person. Ja, das ist ja wirklich uns sehr wichtig. Das ist Bitte. Nicht nett von dir zu sagen, aber naja. So, bitte. Ich möchte gleich mit meinem Vortrag für heute beginnen. Ich habe das auf Deutsch zusammengefasst und ich möchte auch wissen, ob ich den ganzen Vortrag auf Deutsch halten soll oder äh, teilweise Deutsch, Englisch und Hindi. Ich denke, äh, also äh also teilweise wäre das noch besser oder vielleicht mehr Deutsch, mehr Deutsch und dann ein bisschen Hindi, Englisch auch vielleicht. Meiner Meinung nach. Also die Hauptsache ist, dass wir gut verstehen alle. Da die, die Studenten haben auch unterschiedliche Niveaus, dann das wäre nett. Ja. 
So it gibt es ja auch A1, diejenigen, die gerade mit A1 angefangen haben? Uh, ich denke nicht. Also ich checke mal. Uh, ja, nein. Gibt es hier jemanden, der gerade mit A1 angefangen hat? Nein, ich denke B, äh, A2 und äh, B1, B2. Auch C1? Ja, auch C1. Ja. C1 ist auch hier. Okay. Klar, eine Licht auch da. Bitte. So, das geht dann mit ein bisschen mehr Deutsch. Also ja. 40% vielleicht. 30 bis 40% Deutsch. Und dann teilweise Englisch und dann auch. Hindi. Ja, gerne. Ich kann das auch in anderen Sprachen äh, den Vortrag halten, aber leider bin ich nicht so fließend in den anderen Sprachen. Hm. Und das geht nicht. Klar. So, jetzt, äh, was macht man dann? Also präsenten man auch. Das muss ich jeden Tag im Kopf behalten. So ist das. Bitte sagt mir, ob ihr alle mein Bildschirm, einen Bildschirm, also auf mein Screen, ob ihr alle denn meinen Bildschirm sehen könnten. Geht es? Ja, sehr schön. Wir können ja, ja gut sehen. Screen, all of you, gibt es hier jemanden, der den, den Bildschirm nicht sehen kann? Wir sind neben hier, ein Single Screen. Ja, wir können sehen. Okay. So, ich habe meinen Vortrag heute so, als so wie es hier steht, überschriftet. The Music of Speech. Und das klingt ein bisschen besser, denn Musik ist mein, liegt sehr nah an meinem.
auch nicht gut. Ich spreche das Wort etwas anstelle von äh. Na, weißt was? Wenn wir den Man hört den Lehrer gut zu und dann man nachahmt diesen Laut. You imitate this word. Man imitiert diesen Laut. So. This is how our lips look like when we pronounce these sounds, the vowels. Aber it's not just the lips alone. Also es geht nicht nur um die Lippen. Es geht auch um äh, darum, wie man die Zunge, how your tongue inside is also traced. And we'll come to that very quickly. So there are certain sounds for diphthong, and diphthong is a combination of two vowels, like e, i, a, u. Hmm? There are such vowel combinations which are there in the word auch, a, u, to my spiel, would be a diphthong. Hmm? So, i, au, or, and, uh, Basically, this thing. Now look at English. Hey. It's written as B A B E, but pronounced as Beide, E I. I. You bide your time. Bound in respect. Void. Void. So, this diphthong again, the pronunciation has to be perfect. Bait and bite, if you look at these two here, A and I, you cannot interchange them, otherwise the meaning changes. What are the main active places which are active organs, active parts of the body, which are used for your Artikulation. Also, wo wird es artikuliert? Ganz aktiv. Unterlippe, the lower lip, Zungenspitze, the tip of the tongue, Zungenblatt, the flat surface of the tongue, vordere Zungenrücken und hintere Zungenrücken. The tongue, the middle, and at the back. Zungenwurzel, that is right at the base of the tongue. This is for German. Then your stimmlippen, your glottis or your vocal cords. 
But are these the only organs involved in producing sound? Nine. Stripped of these are organa in the menstruation kyopa. On mit diesen organen als passiva articulatorum uh, stellen wir diese deutsche Laute her oder die Laute irgendeiner beliebigen Sprache her. Out of these, what are these here? The upper lip. The lower lip is movable. It's the lower jaw that can move, not the upper jaw. The upper teeth are used. Sandam, that is your alveoles just behind your teeth. Then your roof of the mouth. It's called the palate. Then the soft palate a little further to the back. Then comes the ovula, that is that part that is hanging in the throat. Then the throat itself, the pharynx, is also where we used, uh, is used to produce a sound. Or the sound gum in Urdu. Gum ka mara hai. It's not gum ka mara hai. Konsa gum? Camel gum. It's not that gum. But gum. That comes from the pharynx. It's an Urdu word. So even this part of the body is used to produce a letter, a sound that is uh, first English, comprehensible. So naturally the larynx here. Yeah. And your uh, Shimlipin, that is your vocal cords. Now, I would like here to first. Do you have pens and papers with you, all of you? Do you have pen and paper? Yes. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then I'm going to read out some words. Would you uh, tell me what you heard? You'll have to depend on my spelling for the moment, unfortunately. I have a slightly oldish software, so I can't keep this active, the screen active. I have to disconnect. Uh, I, is my screen visible? No. Don't you mind screens again? My yeah. no. Nine. Okay. Nine. Nine. Right. So I'm going to call out a few words, and you have to depend on my pronunciation. And I like to think, you have to allow me that, indulge me in that, that my pronunciation is as good as that of a German. So please write down a few words I'm going to call out. Let's see whether you get the words correctly. I'll call them out twice. If you want, I can make it three times. But I'll call them out twice. Tuna. 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 Fillin. 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 Stillen. Stehlen. Stellen. Stellen. Beten. Beten. Betten. 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 
heute 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 mein kein Ziege Ziege Züge Bitte. Bitte. Mitte. Mitte. Miete. And the last pair. Often. Often. Ofen. Ofen. Dann all of you? Okay. So jetzt wieder some screen sharing and hopefully you people have been able to write it down it's for your own benefit and practice and fun so ich mache wieder mein screen sharing hier yeah is it okay can you my screen see him yeah yes sir okay now da gehen wir dann jetzt weiter einen moment Ah, so. Juna, Juna. Did you get it right? Füllen, fühlen. Stehlen, stellen. Beten, betten. Heute, heute. Ah, this is a, more like a e. E and U zusammen. E and U zusammen will become a little different from this OI. Quality wise. Hoi, ho, ho, heute, heute. OI. OI and hi. Heute, heute. And then the word here I gave you was mine and kein. 
I, I, A, E, I, and I. Mine, kind. Can I give you this word here? Siege. Is that? And then you umlaut E. C, C. Bitte, bitte. Mitte, Miete. Und dann am Ende habe ich gesagt, offen, offen, offen. How many of you got how many correct? Where did you have problems? Even if you're not written down, which words did you have problems with? <coughs> Sir, I have a problem. Uh, oh, 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 uh, I need a word. Ich weiß nicht. Okay. Be, uh, yeah. Mit, zum Beispiel, uh, ich weiß uh, Männer, aber ich weiß nicht so Männer. Oh, yeah. Ich yeah, but the problem here, uh, um, uh, Anil, is this is men and this is men. Both are pronounced literally the same way. There's a small quality difference here, mena, mena. And this is main. Okay. So, das ist dann, was ich meine, Hörtraining. Wenn man das richtig hört, weiß man das Wort. Man become this build dieses Wortes here in Geher. Immediately the picture springs up. Men. And then here, Männer. Heute, oi, and then I told you, A umlaut, A, and then the U, A. And so they, you pronounce this A and O together, diphthong. Heute. Haut und heute. It sounds so close to this EU. It can cause a problem. Similarly, mine and kind of this is item. And then out here. So, oh, where are we? Here. Bitte, bitte. So, this is nicht nur um, uh, es geht nicht nur um die Umlaute, es geht um die Vokalen. In Deutschen gibt es diese fünf Vokale. There are five vowels in German. A, E, I, O, U. That's all. There are no other vowels in German. And you have to use these vowels in a sentence in combination with other letters of the alphabet. And it is a spelling of this word that tells you whether a vowel is long or short. Is the short bitte or is it a long beta? Is it a short mitte or is it a long mitte? Often or often? Is it bait or bet? Since it's long yeah. means it will be long yeah. means it will be always like uh, well, sure. more. Like I'm talking about uh, anything which is long, mm -hmm. like Peter, so, so it's a, always a combination of uh, letters. No, not necessary. Not okay. necessary. For example, if you have uh, words here, stellen, stellen. Correct. Hülle, hülle. So where is the extra e here? There's no extra e here. Right? Then how we will understand? Like we have, we have to enforce more uh, out yeah. here. Yeah, uh, I'll come to your question uh, after, as soon as we finish the slides. Sure. Good. Thank you. So the problem is there. How do we solve this problem? Okay. Because apart from that, we have an of these Vyota mit H or first the selben Vyota ohne H. But the trick here is, 
the H is spoken here also, but it's not heard because it has been stopped in the throat. When you pronounce a vowel and you utter the sound of a vowel, you are not letting your vocal cords vibrate. You're stopping them from vibrating and then you produce the vowel. So, ha, la, ha, la. And the second one, ala. Ala. The H is dropped, but your throat is ready to pronounce it, but doesn't pronounce it. So, this is a special kind of pronunciation with words which have H and no H. Heart, art. Hoffen, often. Hunt, hunt. Kin, in. Hier, ear. Don't confuse the two. Because that H is a silent sound. It's not ha. When I say ha, I'm actually using a a after that. The sound produced by the throat. That is H. That sound of the air coming out from the throat is given by H. Is depicted by this alphabet H. So you see, there is a letter for each sound that our organs of the mouth produce, which is why H is called a silent letter. Right? There are plenty of examples. The one that you probably know very well is house, house, and then house. Ice, ice. Kin, kin, in. Here, here. So the richtige Aussprache helped uns dabei, uns besser zu verständigen. Hilft uns dabei, besser zu kommunizieren. Probleme tauchen auf bei solchen Kombinationen. Oi, oi, und dann diese Kombination von S, C und H. In dieser Sprache gibt es kein S, H Kombination. There is no S, H for SH as in English. The SH sound in German is always immer mit S, C, H. Schweiz, Schwester, Deutschland, Sch. With the cheek of mine, Deutschland, it should be audible. Schweiz, not Schweiz. And there's a set at the end. Schweiz. Or here, Eins. I and the I E is E. It is very important that you differentiate these two. Don't interchange them depending on your mood at that moment when you write a word. You can't change it. For example, the word mein und mean, they have two different meanings. There's a word called mean, meaner in German that exists. Misspell the word you are given a wrong meaning. This is one of the easier sounds though. You just pronounce A and O zusammen. Audi, Auto, Automat, Aus, Raus. A, U, A, U, Au, Au, Au. That sound should be familiar to us. When somebody hits you on the head, you always keep, we always shout, no? Au. So it's not a difficult sound for us. Aber ein größere oder ein größeres Problem ist mit den Umlauten. Diese drei Umlautalphabeten, Umlautvokale sind typisch für die Deutschen. 
a very typical for German. English had 26 Alphabeten. Deutsch had 26 plus these are three. So A, E, I, O, U, fünf Vokale plus drei. Also acht Vokale hat die deutsche Sprache. So how do we pronounce them? And what is the Unterschied here? Ohne diese zwei Tümpchen oben, without these two dots, the word will become U, O, A. So U, O, A. The moment you put these two dots, it's a new alphabet. These are not beauty spots. These are not put to make the word look beautiful or your page look beautiful. But in fact, they are a new letter, a new alphabet. And the pronunciation will be different. And so this here, O umlaut, is fü, ü, fünf, ü. Here, O, E. Möchte, zwölf, zwölf, Österreich. Österreich. Und auch hier, Ä. Not A, sondern Ä. Don't confuse it with the Hindi A, I. That's not A, this is Ä. Something similar to a sound that a goat would make. Mä, mä, mä. Also Ä. Sekretärin. Keine mach. Sänger. Ä. I don't know whether we would have the time to do the Satz accent. Or what accent? I can show that to you right now. Words have to be stressed differently. Sekretärin, the stress is here. But Sekretärin, not Sekretärin, sondern Sekretärin. Dänemark. It's not Dänemark. Just because you say Tärin at the end, don't make Mark as your highlight. It should be here. Dänemark. Sänger. Ja, Sänger. Auch weiter. Wie kann man das üben? Also, es gibt die sogenannten Zungenbrecher, Tongue Twisters. Uh, almost every language in the world has this. German doesn't need them. As it is, it is a tongue twisting language. But in spite of that, German also has some fun words and put together, strung together in a sentence. Some of them quite meaningless, but it's fun to practice pronunciation. You have learned the pronunciation of S-C-H. It's a sh. You pronounce the letter given here with f. And then there's a letter following that f, that is e. Then there is an E, R, and S. Similarly, the next one, there's a Z at the, uh, at the end. And we learn the pronunciation of this letter, Z, or the Z, as Z. Pronounce it, Fritz. Not Fritz, not a Z sound, but silent, Fritz. So learn to read this. After you learn the sounds, learn to put them into practice. Read this, tongue twisters. Fischer's Fritz, Fischer, Fischer, Fischer. Try to speak them fast. Speak slowly, speak them fast. Train your tongue. This is the fresh training I talked to you about. Fischer's Fritz, Fischer, Fischer, Fischer. Fischer, 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 uh, Fischer's Fritz. Similarly, you'll find lots of them in the internet. Es gibt viele, viele, viele Zungenbrecher. Nicht nur hier, sondern auch im Englischen. Pollard. Bürsten mit schwarzen Boston, Bürsten besser als Bürsten mit blauen Boston. Du and O. See the difference that they are trying to show you here. Bürsten mit schwarzen Boston, Bürsten besser als Bürsten mit blauen Boston. Practicing her. Hinter Hansen's Hasenhaus. 
hängen 100 Hasen raus. 100 Hasen hängen raus hinter Hansens Hasenhaus. So the H sound is being practiced. Here you're practicing the E sound. E. When fliegende fliegen, hinter fliegenden fliegen, fliegen, then fliegen fliegende fliegen, hinter fliegenden fliegen, her. E. It's not fliegen, fliegen, it's fliegen. This is practice for the sound U. There are exercises, there are sentences like these, words like these, some with audios on the internet. We are have feel the material in that. It's a change from your book, an Abwechslung vom Buch. Und man lernt die richtige Aussprache durch solche Spaßübungen. Und am Ende, I'm almost in the end here, the table of phonetics, what are the sounds basically? I'm not included, this is only for the consonants. B, t, d, t, g. Lips are used here. And since they come out with a rush, they're called closes. They explode. Similarly, fricative sounds, because you're causing some friction. Silent. Here, we the fricative. Sir, z, sh, r, sh. And then you're using a nasal cavity. Mm, mm, n, n. And then the l in the front. L, that's why it's called lateral. And then your vibrant, that's something that's vibrating, your r sound. So this is an overall view of the table and their definitions as to where they are produced. Your Both your lips are involved when you produce the sound with P, B, or M. You can't produce it without touching your lips together. By touching your uh, lips to your teeth, we pronounce it F and V. This is basically for English. The third one, apicodental, is not there in German. This is in, for English only, the TH. This is the V, V sound. V. These. All these things, these things, aren't the sort of thing I would involve myself with. With. That's English the way it's spoken by a native speaker. Und das zeigt mir auch, welche Artikulationsstelle gibt es. Und dann vielen Dank jetzt für deine Aufmerksamkeit. Thank you so much for your patience. You're being patient, listening to me and allowing me to speak on. Now, if you have questions, I'll do my best to satisfy your curiosity. So, I'm open to questions. Hello. Deutsch, English, Hindi. Hello, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, we man das word Deutschland aussprechen. Deutsch. Das ist Deutsch und dann Sch. Zusammen Deutschland. Ich fahre nach Deutschland, nicht Deutsch. Viele von uns sagen Deutsch. Tch, tch. Das ist nicht Tch, sondern Sch. 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 Shiva. Sch. Oh. Darfish, sir? Yeah, uh, sir. Sir, uh, meine Frage ist, uh, ist es wichtig uh, für uh, richtige Aussprache, Aussprechen, uh, auf die gleiche Sprache zu denken? Uh, wenn wir auf Englisch oder Hindi oder Muttersprache denken und dann übersetzen, mm -hmm. uh, vielleicht wir sind, uh, wir machen vielen Fehler. Was? Amitabh, I'll, I'll uh, 
give you a simple three words which are from English. Yeah. Okay, just three yeah. words. You have to tell me what these words are. Yeah. Goods, balbalat. <laughs> Nein, ich kann nicht. Okay. Why not? This is English. Das ist doch Englisch. Three words. Goods, balbalat. Goods, balbalat. Huh. Goods, balbalat. The minimum? You tell me. It's Nein. English. Three. I'll give you a hint. These are three words. These are English words. I'm not even giving them to you in German. These are three words in English. Goods, balbalat. Now you know why pronunciation is important. Simple yeah. translation will not help you. If you mispronounce a word, then your meaning will change. Let me give you another drastic example. S I T. What is S I T as a verb? Sit. Uh, Sit. Yeah. Sit. So if I give you a sentence, yaha bad jao. So ish zago uh, of oh, yeah. English. Please sit yeah, here. Please, please sit yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, bad jao, yeah, bad jaye. Please sit here. Okay. Okay. But I suppose there are people in this country from a certain region. I don't want to name them, who have problems with the sound sir. Yeah, understood. Was the meaning? Right. Yeah, sie sagen sure of sir. Vielleicht. Yeah. Hasn't the, meaning, hasn't the meaning changed? Uh, drastically and whole yes. different. So now you see why it is important to learn the Aussprache. Warum ist es so wichtig? Man spricht richtig aus. Yeah. So solche uh, Fehler oder um, Missverständnisse könnten auch in der deutschen Sprache vorkommen, wenn man das Wort falsch ausspricht. Ja. Hm, noch Fragen? Is, does, uh, by the way, you wanted the solution to Google's Balbalat? Nein, Sir. Meine Frage war, dass hm? wie können wir unsere Gewohnheit entwickeln, auf uh, uh, Deutschsprache zu denken? Ja, ja, gute. Das ist eine gute Frage, Amitab. Sehr gut. Uh, wenn man schon erwachsen ist, fehlt es einem sehr schwer, die richtige Aussprache zu bekommen, zu lernen. Man lernt eine Aussprache sehr, sehr einfach und gut, wenn man, also als man ein Kind ist. Ja, das stimmt. As a child, you learn it much faster and better. Because your organs inside your mouth, your tongue, your, all the other mouth parts are not yet fully formulated. They're still flexible for you to produce the sound that you hear. But once you grow older, using only one language, your tongue and your other organs, they are now fixed to produce only that set of sounds. So it's very difficult to move out of that zone and produce a new sound in another language. The same example with sir and sure. Because I have grown up using sure all my life, from childhood till now. Now suddenly I'm asked to say, sir, my tongue doesn't come to the front. It stops behind my teeth and says, sure. 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 Where are you, sure? So, for example, here, if I look at that uh, screen in front of me, I see Shonu here. I don't see Sonu. Shonu is here. So, it's not, it's not easy at an adult stage, but, but the human mind is all powerful. You have to train this here.
what is the tongue after all it's a muscle and what controls the muscle the mind tell your mind to bring the tongue to the front uh, bring it to the front ah and then put it close to the teeth so close your lips open them slightly first close them mm. put your tongue between your teeth open your lips blow up sit 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 seat sit 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 seat pronounce other words city not city city bajani aati hai city kya hota hai city hota hai city bajao imagine that new song which is the hit and uh, supposedly a hit mujhe malum nahi hai but suna hai ki hit hai city bajai lo imagine that going the song going as city bajai lo so you have to train yourself that's uh, that's why you have to done this is uh, this a dia skit site uh, i showed you that slide right in the beginning yeah your training on fresh training the biden brauchen wir listen to the sound carefully and then try to imitate it see where is it being produced and then try to imitate it as so, uh, as an answer to your question it's challenging but doable it will take time but doable yes yeah verstanden vielen dank aber heute auf morgen geht es nicht also so geht es nicht es gibt kein sauber hier no magic wand practice ja yeah. you know noch fragen so uh, this, uh, there was one question about uh, the sound which we say the long word or a long letter where we are using so how we are going to use that like you said stay hand and stain still mm-hmm. still in Yeah. and let's say bitte bitte yeah so so uh, mean the problem is like when we hear it's like look like the we are hearing it's a That's ie it, but yeah. it can be ei also no ei is always i yeah so but but sir uh, when we speak let's say bitte which is like uh, b i t t e Mm-hmm. and when we say when we say b i e t e there mm-hmm. are also one one word which we mm-hmm. use yeah. so how we are going to uh, uh, understand like how we are going to differentiate uh let me give you an example from hindi how many vowels do we have in hindi uh it's about uh, can you call um, them out a a a e e u u a right. so you have a, yeah, yeah good so you have a short vowel and a long vowel correct a a e e u e. u yep but european languages don't have this differentiation that the differentiation mm. is in the word itself okay so when you learn the word you will learn whether the vowel is short is it e or is it e mhm So even initially yeah. in Hindi, we do have problems with the spellings. Yeah. Is it a pani ka chita or pani ka chita? Pani ka chita. So is it a long e or is it a short e? It's a long e. Right. So we learnt it with the word, na? No? Yeah, yeah. So similarly in German also. you learn the word along with its pronunciation not just the word you see the word in front of you oh iska matlab kya hai friend se pooch liya ya teacher se pooch liya hello sir in short you can see ich verstehe das nicht and the teacher gives you the example or the meaning don't blindly go there you know ask the teacher bitte wie spreche ich das wort aus mhm how do i pronounce the word aus sprechen to speak out to speak aloud to pronounce uska uchcharan kya hai 
Sir, so, so normally what I'll do, I'll follow like whenever uh, the dictionary, I used to hear the sound as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. But I don't yeah, know what do dictionary like it is. You have to stick to a standard German dictionary. Don't use a dictionary written by a by an Englishman or an American or somebody else. No, I'm following dict.cc. Yeah, to a certain extent, it's good. But there are some variations I found in that dictionary. But be careful. Okay. Always double check with some other dictionary. Any any other dictionary can you say, sir? Duden, D-U-D-E-N. Okay, Duden. Yeah. Sure. Sure, sir. Thank you. Bitter, Gern Geschehen. Talk Fragen? You haven't still told me what was the what were the three words I told you in English when Amitabh asked me the question? Goods Balbalat. Sir, I am getting for it's goods valuable at. Goods valuable at a certain rate or whatever. G O O D S goods valuable to put a value onto them, to put a rate on them, to put a price on them, valuable at AT. Goods valuable at. The speed was too much, that's why it was not understandable. Whatever the reason, is it the correct pronunciation? Forget the speed. Balbalat? No, but it's a, it's a valuable. It's like we, we speak like that. No, so we it's don't. a valuable. We say valuable. We say valuable. We don't say balbal. <laughs> no. So instead of a V, I've used a B sound. Yeah, but it is not understandable. What If I ask you, what is the volume? <laughs> Volume, right? Because we understand like that. But if you go in other countries, like if you go to uh, Saudi, they use P as a B, police, not police. Each word, that word police is international, by the way. Huh? It's in, it's used in many, <laughs> many languages, many languages. But in Hindi, it's normally police. Then there is police. In German, it's polizei or a polizist. Right, so it, it varies. Some are international words. So so it, to a certain extent, you can get away with that slight mispronunciation. But what about germs, which are words which are specific to that language? For example, uh, uh, the advantage, uh, I'm sorry, Yash, the advantage in German is you pronounce what you see in front of you. So when, once you have learned the alphabet, A, B, B, C, S, D, D, A, F, G, H, E, J, K, L, M, and so on. And then you come to this word O, that's just Emma O. There is no other pronunciation to the letter O. So your city of, uh, which is the capital of uh, the UK, is London, O, O, London, not London. If you're saying London, why did you write L O? It should be L U or L A. English doesn't have a uniformity in pronunciation. F A L L. How do you pronounce the word in English? F A L L. Pronounce fall. Oh, fall. Yes. Fall. Why should it be O oh when you're writing A? And in school, you'll have A for apple, A. Ah. So why is it not fal? Why is B A L L ball, ball? Why is it not bal? A for apple is what I was told. I was not told A is for apple. In school, I was taught A means A, apple. The teacher never said apple. Had she said apple, I would have learned B A L L O, apple, ball. FALL, fall, apple. The, the sounds are different. So English that way is extremely difficult to learn to master because 
the sounds don't match. In German, you pronounce whatever is written in front of you. P-S-Y-C-H-O-L-O-G-I-E is psychology. Psychology. You say psychology in English, but don't pronounce a P. You write it with a P, but you don't pronounce the P. Then why write it with a P? Oh, there is a reason for that, but let's not go into that. As lay people, let's argue it from that point of view. When it's not pronounced, why write it? Why not simply S-Y, psychology? Why should it be a S-Y-C-H? Why can't we have a S-Y-K? Psychology. Simpler. But it's a P-S-Y-C-H-O-L-O-G-I-E. Or Y in English, I-E in German. So what you see in front of you, pronounce it. P and S together, S, 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 S. Psychology. The letter Y is pronounced as Ypsilon, E. So transfer that sound, E. P, S, E, C, 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 C. Psychology. So German is that way easier in terms of Aussprache. Be true to what you have learned as a beginner with the letter and the sound. A, B, C, D, A. The E is always an A. F, G, H, E. The letter I is pronounced as E. Then comes J, K, L, M, N. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, the letter V is F, F sound, V, V, W, X, Y, Z, T and S together, Utsa. So Z is pronounced with a Z, Zeit, Zeit, not Zeit. So the original pronunciation is to be maintained when you speak German. Also das muss man beibehalten. Was man schon im A1 gelernt hat, muss beibehalten werden. Dann ist die deutsche Aussprache kein Problem. Ja, was ein Problem ist, ist dann auch die Intonation. Normally in German there are Two kinds of intonation in a sentence. As a brief thing, I think we have overshot the time. Well over the time. Einmal steigende intonation. It rises at the end of the sentence. Einmal fallende. Two basic things. Keep this in mind. The steigende intonation is by Fragen. Welche Fragen? Entscheidungsfragen. Which begin with a verb. Comes to me. Comes to me goes up. But if I use the same question with a W question word, any W, wann, woher, wohin, wie, was, wen, wem, any W question, the tone doesn't go up but falls at the end. Woher kommen Sie? Woher kommen Sie? Not woher kommen Sie? Woher kommen Sie? So, steigende Informa uh, Intonation bei Fragen. Sonst fallende. Ich gehe nach Haus. Ich gehe nach Haus. Not, ich gehe nach Haus. Ich gehe nach Haus. Make sure it falls at the end. These are the two basic intonation patterns. Sir, hello. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Like, uh, in in English language, why people include every language like uh, you know Greek or uh, maybe more language word they use in a English language? Sometimes we confuse like uh, we pronounce in English or maybe another language. So it's difficult. Like, uh, if do you have an example? No, I don't remember that word, but uh, okay. when I read the book, so, so at that time I failed. 
like okay. in a english uh, novel book they used uh, other uh, you know language word also right what the britishers have done or the english people have done is that they had a very good navy historically speaking so they went all over the world in their ships whichever country they went to they went as friends as business people as traders and then occupied that country naturally being in that country they not only uh, did trade and exploited that country but also took back a few words from that country back to their own country and included that in their language many words they could not pronounce so some pronunciation they changed so that it fit into the english and their mouths that they could pronounce it i'll give you a couple of examples very quickly okay. then they also borrowed words from french and other languages because their own language did not have enough vocabulary to describe what they saw outside so they use that word from there to describe it since they did not have that word in their own language they said let us use the same word as it is pronounced by those people we will pronounce that as close as possible for example my car is parked in the garage i have a garage at home and my car is parked in the garage not garage okay it's garage because the word comes from french je what are you by profession oh i work for the times of india i'm a journalist je not je hindi it is journalist but the correct pronunciation is je journalist as a so, how madri yeah so how can we identify like uh... sometimes if it's a foreign word you just have to look up the dictionary and learn the pronunciation okay. english that way is much more tricky yeah 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 especially with french words v a s e in which you put your flowers almost all of us have thus at home isn't it into which you put all your flowers cut flowers and put them in the v a s e what is the v a s e how will you pronounce it vase yeah that's german yeah. that's vase yeah. yeah you have to say flower vase but actually many of us mispronounce it and say vase flower vase okay right t o w e l it's what you use every morning all of us towel 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 it's not towel it's towel where's my towel I put it up here yesterday. I don't see it on the line anymore. So where's my towel? The other thing that we are worried about most of the time in uh, rainy season and otherwise also is what we don't get sometimes for long periods. P O W E R. Power. Power. Nine. Power. I don't have power today at home. There's been a power cut. Power cut. not power cut power cut so they have different rules for their pronunciation so there's another word that has come from french which is used very much in english c a f e cuff cafe so you know the french pronunciation but have you seen the spelling in hindi in many many uh, places in india cafe cafe yeah in hindi it is written as cafe ka ke upar ek hi matra uske baad fa cafe yeah cafe but how many how many people in india know it's a french word it should be pronounced as cafe and in french the word cafe actually means coffee not the place where it's uh, are uh, being consumed yeah right so it varies from place to place so the british not only changed the words in their language they also changed it in the country they were in 
For example, we used to have a town in South India called Uti. It's a hill station. So now how Yes, sir. Yeah. So, ha, and they called it oh super superb, nice place. They called it Utakam Mand. They made the spelling O O T A C A M U N D Utakam Mand. But they changed the original spelling and the pronunciation because they could not pronounce the word Uttaka Mandalam. It's now being changed back to the original spelling. It's called Uttaka Mandalam. The same thing happened to the capital of Kerala. They could not pronounce the original name, so they changed it to Trivandrum. Okay. After many years, today, Trivandrum is now called Tiruvananthapuram. That was the original name. But they just could not pronounce it. Tiruvananthapuram. And they also borrowed words from Indian languages. The word khaki. You know the word khaki, right? Yeah. Khaki uniform. It's part, yeah. of, it's part of English language taken from India. Varanda goes from India. Uh, bungalow, which they use in English and call it bungalow. I have a bungalow back there. It's from Bangla. And sir, Chai also uh, yeah, Chinese, yeah. Chinese. Chai is from India. Chai is, the word is from India. The origin of Chai is in, in China. But the word is from India, Chai. The same thing goes for words like uh, kamarband. Kamarband is what is worn by ladies here, isn't it? You see them yeah. normally at weddings. Yeah, yeah. So that same word has gone into English now. It's called kamarband. C U M M E R B U N D. Kamarband. So they have borrowed words. So that way, English language has a huge vocabulary thanks to their taking words from other languages and putting them into their language that way it's good but the problem with uh, the words is many english people themselves do not know how to pronounce these words then why they put <laughs> because they don't have an equivalent for that word in other language okay Look at Indian languages. Do you know the word station? S-T-A-T-I-O-N? Yeah. Where did this come from? Which language is it from in India? Rise to of Sanskrit is Thanak. Amitabh, dhoonte rai jaoge. As that ad for the soap goes. Dhoonte rai jaoge. The word station has come from English. India mein railway kaha tha? The Britishers bought, brought it to India in 1853. Yeah. Yeah. Kolkata, right, sir? Nine, Thane. Mumbai to Thane. Thane, Thane. Crossed railway line 1853, if I'm not wrong. So they brought this word railway. Happily, we log aaj bhi use karte hain, rail. Bharatiya rail. The word rail is not an Indian word. So hum logo ne bhi liya hai maasa. We talk about a train. We don't say low patgamini. We talk of station. We talk of is station. We talk about station. But the word is still station. We have pronounced it according to our region where we are. So these borrowings do happen. It's very, very common. Since we are talking about German and English, Germans have, don't have so many borrowings. But right now, they have started borrowing from English. And a yeah. new language has evolved in Germany called Denglish. So there are words like genes, computer, mouse. These words have now come into German language. Laptop. 
that is how uh, language is being considered and thought to be a living being it grows anything that grows is alive and language is growing there are new words added every year the ones that are not used are forgotten dropped they become archaic so, before 1940 yeah yeah so you you mean we can uh, spot from dictionary if we don't know the word from other language they put so yes. this is only the one spot option so we can see there right yeah. so a good dictionary will also give you the history of the word as to where it came from and as to how it is pronounced okay so that you have to check now with uh, online dictionaries you have more options so do check as to where it comes from okay thank you any other questions any other doubts anything else you would like to know sir yeah sir as you say that um, how to pronounce my name sonu sir can you again tell me yeah sonu is sonu for me sir sonu not sonu because i can pronounce sir and sh separately yeah Okay. For example, I see, I see. There's a, there's a Jaya is here. Jaya Saini. A German will not be able to pronounce Jaya Saini. She'll be Jaya. The J for the German is Y. They just cannot pronounce this J. Very difficult for them. If you force them to pronounce it correctly, they'll probably say Jaya Saini. Jaya. But not J as she writes her name. So it is something like uh, in in region, uh, like I belong to Jharkhand, or there are like uh, Bihar region and all. So they 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 call like Shadi Shadi, not Shadi. That's true. So. that that is what as learners of german now we consciously learn the sound and imitate it so that we don't make this mistake that is what so we should be aware that was what i had shown you uh, in one of the earlier slides that we compare and then imitate okay in this language it is like this in this language it is like this So I have a comparison. So I should not mispronounce this word. Anything else? Any other questions? Any other doubts? Anyone? So anything we want to know, sir? You want to uh, give any tips apart from that, like for both languages, English and German? Practice. practice speaking with a friend remember when you learn to speak or you want to speak you need a partner you can't stand in front of a mirror like amitabh bachchan and come up with a solo dialogue you're only speaking to your reflection the reflection will not answer you back okay so you need a partner to speak to one one platform is this saturday meeting to speak get a response the more you speak the better you will learn how to speak you learn more vocabulary you will be listening to different accents and at the same time gain knowledge about whatever the topic is yeah so it's think... one way the other one is speak to a good friend maybe here there's somebody here with whom you are in contact don't chat don't use whatsapp don't use telegram or signal don't use instagram speak call up once a day let the friend call you up once a day say 10 minutes we will talk in german we will talk in english it will help you with your pronunciation also so if we don't have a partner so what can we do speak aloud so at least you can hear yourself speak and see if you are going wrong check where you are going wrong okay. record record your voice record your 
That's speaking. one option. Yes, yes. Suppose you don't have a recording option. At least you can listen and then still find out. No? Yeah. I do that. That's why I'm suggesting. That's excellent. Well done, Yash. That's well done. When you play back the recording, compare it with the sounds of that word online. Okay. The other thing, watch films, not only for enjoyment, but also for the language. Don't watch American films. Don't watch American films. Their accent is terrible. Even we have a facility where we are getting more uh, story books from German we language. Why we audio, 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 yeah. audio. Yes, correct. Audio one. Yeah, audio ones are good. You have to listen yep. to it. Listen, not read. Reading will really may increase your vocabulary, but it won't increase your speaking capacity. So audio books is what you need. Listen to the stories. Listen to the way the pronunciation is done. Listen to the rhythm of the language, listen to the music in the language. How is it being pronounced? How is it being uttered? Okay. Right, I can see now Dave has made an entry right in front. So obviously he is fed up. No, no. He, wants. <laughs> no. he wants to be fed up. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Actually, yeah. <laughs> No, I was shown Mittal side. I was shown Mittal to solve our next essay. I do is half of the answer side. I can just meet you or not. Or least I'll do what we should. Yeah, meet you or not meet you. Yes, sir. Nice. Yeah, you know, I'll do what he was in the dark. Yeah, this is those are out. So our that's our British tall. I'll do this. Why do when we are in my reader with right redden than Jin beer, virklish, natolish, uber gluklish, zo net phone in and that's the net net phone beer. So they say as a net phone beer, so she are British or net and water for me. So have that is Emma and said new again for me by beer here to sign on by Alan. These are student in here to sign. Then we don't hear ya Emma beer. The arise and natolish. It's the name of that. Thank you, sir. Also, friend, we are having I can tell you, I shown a four lesson, and it's been just that we have feel learned having, yeah, and we have read an even better. Feel a little bit dunk, also, all the varin there be guy start and having out here feel a fragen gestellt, das war auch sehr toll, und dann kann man auch also das Gefühl haben, dass alle interessiert sind. ट Jason bleibt munter und bleibt zu Hause. Bitte. Klar, <lacht> klar. Und kommt bitte online immer wieder. <lacht> ja. Ja wo? So tschüss dann. Ja. Ciao. Danke schön. Ciao so tschüss. Bis nächstes Mal. Tschüss. Tschüss. Ciao.